you've quoted General Milley calling Donald Trump a, a fascist. You yourself have not used that word to describe him. Let me ask you tonight, do you think Donald Trump is a fascist? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And I, and I also believe that the people who know him best on this subject should be trusted. Again, look at their careers. These are not people, with the exception, I think, of only Mike Pence. These were not politicians. These are career people who have served in, 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 in the highest roles in national security, who have served as generals in our military, who are highly respected. Talking about the person who would be commander in chief, not to mention what we know and what they've told us about he ta how he talks about the military. That's Vice President Kamala Harris at the CNN town hall that Donald Trump ran from. Donald Trump was too afraid to attend that, not his safe space. And Vice President Kamala Harris called him out for that. Here is Vice President Kamala Harris saying Trump was supposed to be here tonight, but I guess he's just too scared. Play the clip. Mentioned, by the way, again, Donald Trump should be here tonight to talk with you and answer your questions. He's not. He refused to come. But understand that part of his plan is to put in place a national sales tax of at least 20% on everyday goods and necessities. And that by economist estimates, independent economists, would cost you as the American consumer and taxpayer an additional $4,000 a year. Uh, here Anderson Cooper confirms that Donald Trump was invited but didn't show, play the clip. We also invited former President Donald Trump to participate in a town hall or a debate. He declined. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Vice President Kamala Harris. Vice President Kamala Harris points out the statements uh, made by Donald Trump as recounted by Donald Trump's closest advisors, including four-star generals who worked for Donald Trump. Play the clip. We know that is why Mike Pence is not running with him again, why the job was empty. And then today we learned that John Kelly, a four-star Marine general, who was his longest serving chief of staff, gave an interview recently in the last two weeks of this election, talking about how dangerous Donald Trump is. And I think one has to think about why would someone who served with him, who is not political, a four-star Marine general, why is he telling the American people now and frankly, I think of it as, as he's just putting out a 911 call to the American people. Understand what could happen if Donald Trump were back in the White House. And this time, we must take very seriously those folks who knew him best and who were career people are not going to be there to hold him back. At least before, there were folks who we know what he would say, but they would restrain him. Imagine now Donald Trump in the Oval Office, in the Situation Room. He who has openly admired dictators, said he would be a dictator on day one. The former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff has said he is a fascist to the core. So I think that when the American people reflect, especially those who are undecided, on who you should listen to. Don't take my word for it. In fact, go online and listen to John Kelly, his voice, talking about what he thinks of Donald Trump two weeks before the election. Because I think we all know, to your point, Anderson, it is close, but there are undecided voters who clearly, by being here, have an open mind, want to talk in a way that is about grounded in issues and fact. And when they hear these facts, I think it, it compels a lot of people to be concerned about the future of our country with Donald. Vice President Kamala Harris talks about Donald Trump's Supreme Court selections who overturned Roe v. Wade. Let's play the clip. We who believe that every person in our nation should be free from bigotry, discrimination, and hate will continue to fight for equality and justice for all. And we who believe in reproductive freedom will fight for a woman's right to choose because one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree the government should not be telling her what to do. You know, when he was president, Donald Trump, former president, handpicked three members of the United States Supreme Court. 
because he intended for them to overturn Roe v. Wade. The United States Supreme Court, previously the court of Thurgood and RBG. And as he intended, they did. Well, let me tell you something. When I am president of the United States, and when Congress passes a law to restore those freedoms, I will sign it into law. We are not playing around. <laughs> Vice President Kamala Harris uh, responds to difficult questions from the audience in articulate and thoughtful ways. She's not talking about migrants eating cats or dogs. She's not talking about Hannibal Lecter. You know, you've got Donald Trump up there now talking about the penis size of golfers. Uh, on the other hand, you have Vice President Kamala Harris giving thoughtful responses to tough questions like this. Thank you, Anderson. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. So my question is concerning groceries. Grocery yeah. prices have gone up uh, quite a bit in the last four years. Yeah. And some people blame former President Trump. Some people blame President Biden. Who would you say is correct? And what would you do to bring prices down for Americans? Thank you, Eric. And you're absolutely right. You know it. I know it. I think most Americans know it. Price of groceries is still too high. And we need to address it in a number of ways. One of my aspects of doing what we need to do to bring down the cost of living for working people and the middle class in America is to address the issue of grocery prices. Part of my background and how I come to it is probably a new approach grounded in a lot of my experiences as a former attorney general where I took on price gouging. And m part of my plan is to create a new approach that is the first time that we will have a national ban on price gouging which is companies taking advantage of the desperation and need of the American consumer and jacking up prices without any consequence or accountability. So that is one way. But to your point, Eric, there, you know, there are a number of issues that we need to address in terms of bringing down the cost of living. It includes what we need is a really a new approach that I bring to the, the issue of affordable housing, including, for example, rent. And again, I bring to it my experience, knowing what has been happening in terms of how corporations have been buying up blocks of property to diminish competition, and then rents get jacked up, and addressing that, both in terms of making sure that there is a consequence and accountability for that, but also investing in people's dreams of home ownership, you know, knowing that for too long, frankly, both administrations, I mean, both administrations and both parties, Democrats and Republicans, haven't done enough to deal with the issue of housing. And we need a, pr a new approach that includes working with the private sector. I say that as a, as, a, as a devout public servant, working with the private sector to cut through the red tape, working with home builders, working with developers to create tax incentives so that we can create more housing yeah. supply and bring down the price. All right, are you ready for this fact? Traditional bed sheets can harbor more bacteria than a toilet seat. It can lead to acne, allergies, and stuffy noses. It's just gross. Miracle Made, however, offers a whole line of self-cleaning antibacterial bedding, such as sheets, pillowcases, and comforters that prevent up to 99.7% of bacteria growth and require up to three times less laundry. It's why I use Miracle Made on my bedding. Using silver-infused fabrics inspired by NASA, Miracle Made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long, no matter the weather, so you get a better sleep every single night. It's why I love Miracle sheets. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer, than sheets used by some five-star hotels. So go to trymiracle.com slash Midas. Trymiracle.com slash Midas and try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save up to 40%. And if you use our promo code Midas at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed by a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash Midas and use the 
the code Midas to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash Midas to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. When Vice President Kamala Harris responded to questions about the fact that Donald Trump did not build a border wall, Trump, what, was it built 2% of a wall? Mexico didn't pay for it. And when Trump did his photo op, he was standing in front of a portion of the wall built by former President Barack Obama. Play the clip. Well, let's talk about Donald Trump and that border wall. (laughs) So remember, Donald Trump said Mexico would pay for it. Come on. They didn't. How much of that wall did he build? I think the last number I saw is about 2%. And then when it came time for him to do a photo op, you know where he did it? in the part of the wall that President Obama built. And here uh, we have Vice President Kamala Harris talking about the filibuster. Play the clip. Codifying Roe v. Wade, that would obviously require 60 votes in in the Senate, a a majority of the House. That's a big that's a big leap. You don't we don't have that yet. If that's not possible to codify it in the House, what do you do? I think we need to take a look at the filibuster, to be honest with you. But the, the reality of it is this. Let's talk about how we got here. When Donald Trump was president, he hand selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade. And they did as he intended. And now in 20 states, we have Trump abortion bans that include punishing healthcare providers, doctors and nurses in Texas, you know they provide for prison for life? For a healthcare provider for doing the job that they believe is in the best interest of their patient. Here, Vice President Kamala Harris talks about being a president for all Americans and working across the aisle. Play the clip. Good evening. Uh, thank Good you evening. for visiting us in Delaware County, um, Vice President Harris. My question is this If you could accomplish only one major policy goal that required congressional action, what would it be and why? Well, there's not just one. I have to be honest with you, Carol. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to happen, but let's let's. I think that maybe part of this point that I how I think about it is we've got to get past this era of politics and partisan politics, slowing down what we need to do in terms of progress in our country, and that means working across the aisle. I've done that before. We did it around whether it be what we were able to accomplish with the bike partisan infrastructure deal or some of the work that we have done in terms of dealing with gun safety. But we've got to work across the aisle. And it is my commitment to work with Democrats, with Republicans, with independents to deal with a number of issues, whether it be what we need to do in terms of housing and creating legislation that creates incentives for that, what we need to do to reinstate the freedom of a woman to make decisions about her own body and not have her government tell her what to do whether it be what we need to do to actually invest in a substantial way in the industries of the future, in American-based manufacturing, in American-based industries where American workers and union workers have those jobs in a way that is good paying jobs that gives people the dignity they deserve. All of those areas I plan on working across the aisle and with Congress, including the issue of immigration, which we've got to fix. Let me ask you, you've talked Vice President Kamala Harris talks about billionaires getting unfair advantages with their taxes over everyday Americans. Play the clip. I would like to hear more nuts and bolts about your economic plans. Sure. Thank you, Pam. Um, So first of all, it is the case in the United States of America that billionaires on average pay less taxes as a percentage than teachers and firefighters and nurses. Yeah. I'm talking and about that, hard workers like like pound the street I'm, have I'm, some success. I'm, yes, no, 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 I yes. understand, but I want to just let's Not set this the really let, high. Let's set the scene, right? Yeah. So when I say that the the, the richest among us mm-hmm. need to pay their fair share, okay. I am referencing that and I I need to reference that because sadly Donald Trump when he was president gave tax cuts to the richest, to billionaires and big corporations, which added trillions of dollars to our deficit. So that sadly needs to be said in a way that should be obvious to your point, 
but is not given what he did. Now, in terms of what we need to do to bring down taxes, I have pledged and have a plan for a middle class tax cut that would affect 100 million Americans, including, for example, what we will do around small businesses in terms of tax deductions, in terms of what small businesses are now being mired in, in terms of a bureaucracy around they have to fill out and do their taxes in a way that actually holds them back. Part of my plan includes extending a middle class tax cut that would include a $6,000 tax cut, essentially a child tax credit, for parents and young parents in particular, knowing that the vast majority of our parents have a natural desire to parent their children well, but not always the resources. So this is going to include an extra amount of just money that people can use to pay for child care, which is far too expensive for too many working families. And part of the issue here is this. We cannot and I will not raise taxes on anyone making less than $400,000 a year, mm. but we do need to take seriously the system that benefits the richest and does not help out working middle class Americans. I come from the middle class and I believe that the middle class needs tax breaks to be able to actually not just get by, but get ahead. So your Vice President Kamala Harris talks about her background and her faith. Play the clip. Well, my pastor, Reverend Dr. Amos C. Brown of Third Baptist Church, um, it was it was an extraordinary day that Sunday when um, the president called me and I, I instinctively understood the gravity of the moment, the seriousness of the moment. I didn't predict or know exactly how that day would play out. And obviously now it's been three months since I've been at the top of the ticket, actually three months as of yesterday. But I just called him. I, I needed that spiritual kind of um, connection. I needed that advice. I needed a prayer. And um, and there's a there's a part of the scripture that talks about Esther mm. and a time such as this and um, and that's what we talked about and it was very comforting for me and um, do you pray every day? I do pray every day. Mm. I do pray every day. Sometimes twice a day. Mm. Um, I you know my I grew up. So we grew up uh, in a little neighborhood church in Oakland, 23rd Avenue Church of God. And um, I was raised to believe in a loving God, to believe that your faith is a verb, you know? You, you, you live your faith and, um, and that that the way that one should do that is that your work and your life's work should be to think about how you can serve in a way that is uplifting other people, um, that is about caring for other people. And um, that guides a lot of how I think about my work and, and um, what is important. Vice President Kamala Harris talks about how Donald Trump stole COVID tests at the height of the pandemic and gave them to Vladimir Putin. Play this clip. And we know who he is. He admires dictators sending love letters back and forth with Kim Jong-un. Talks about the president of Russia and then most recently the reports are that in the height of COVID, when most Americans could not get their hands on a COVID test, Americans were dying by the hundreds a day. He secretly sent COVID tests to the president of Russia for his personal use. So again, there, this, this election in 13 days is presenting the American people with a very significant decision. And on the one side on this issue of who is going to model what it means to use the bully pulpit of the president of the United States in a manner that in tone, word, and deed is about lifting up our discourse, fighting against hate, as opposed to fanning the flames of hate, which Donald Trump does consistently. I, I'm going to tell you, we are an incredible country and we love our country. Y'all wouldn't be here unless we love our country. And there are certain things where we've just got to come together 
and realize that 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 we do believe in the importance of healthy debate on real issues, but there are certain standards we've got to have. And, you know, another point that even John Kelly talked about, I, I believe, and many have, is January 6th, mm. where you have the President of the United States defying the will of the people in a free and fair election and unleashing a violent mob who attacked the United States Capitol. 140 law enforcement officers were attacked. Some were killed. And so I, I say that to say the American people deserve to have a president who encourages healthy debate, works across the aisle, not afraid of good ideas wherever they come from, but also maintains certain standards about how we think yeah. about the role and the responsibility and certainly not comparing oneself in a clearly admiring way to Hitler. More from Vice President Kamala Harris here talking about how Donald Trump's former chief of staff, John Kelly, said that Donald Trump admires Adolf Hitler. Let's play the clip. But I'm going to tell you what doesn't help. Again, I invite you to listen and go online to listen to John Kelly, the former chief of staff of Donald Trump, who has told us, Donald Trump said, why, essentially, why aren't my generals like those of Hitler's? Like Hitler, who has referred several times, we've heard the reports for years. Yeah, no question was off limits. Vice President Kamala Harris talked about her strong support of the bipartisan border bill that Donald Trump killed. Let's play it. Start with this. America's immigration system is broken and it needs to be fixed. And it's been broken for a long time. And part of what we need to do is always prioritize what we need to do to strengthen our border. I will tell you I'm the only person in this race among the two choices that voters have. I've personally prosecuted transnational criminal organizations in the trafficking of guns, drugs, and human beings. I have spent a significant part of my career making sure that our border is secure and that we do not allow criminals in and we don't allow that kind of trafficking to happen and come into our country. And as the as my opponent has proven himself, he would prefer to run on the problem instead of fix the problem. You may know there were some of the most conservative members of the United States Congress working with others that came up with a border security bill that would have put 1,500 more border agents at the border. Those border agents are overwhelmed. They need the support. They need the backup. It would have allowed us to have more resources to stem the flow of fentanyl. I don't need to tell this state and people around the country what is happening in terms of the scourge of fentanyl and how it is literally killing Americans. It would have put resources into stemming the flow. It would have given more resources to prosecute, to investigate and prosecute transnational criminal organizations. It would have done a lot of good. Donald Trump got wind of the bill and told them, don't put it forward. He killed the bill because he'd prefer to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. We have to have a secure border and we have to have a comprehensive pathway for citizenship. Let, let me and that includes requiring people hardworking people to earn citizenship and do it in a comprehensive, humane and orderly manner. Let me hear Vice President Kamala Harris talks about that her administration will be different from the Biden administration. She's her own person. Her administration will be her administration. Play the clip. Well, first of all, my administration will not be a continuation of the Biden administration. I bring to this role my own ideas and my own experience. I represent a new generation of leadership on a number of issues and believe that we have to actually take new approaches. For example, what we talked about in terms of housing, I, my experience that leads to that priority includes what I did to take on the big banks around the foreclosure crisis when I brought billions of dollars to homeowners that were the subject of predatory lending. I know what homeownership means to the American people, not to mention what it meant to my mother who worked very hard and saved up so that by the time I was a teenager, she was able to buy our first home. I bring to it my experience actually taking care of my mother when she was sick and it was as it turned out dying from cancer. 
And so I know what it means and have the experience of taking care of an elderly relative and I have raised children. And so I bring to my priorities and will as president a new approach and a new idea, frankly, about what we need to do to deal with the sandwich generation, which is what we call those folks who are literally in the middle, who are raising their young children and taking care of their parents, which is why my plan and approach says, hey, you shouldn't have to, to, to wipe out all your savings to qualify for Medicaid to be able to get support to hire somebody to help you cook for your parent or help them put on a sweater. I've done that, I know what that requires. You shouldn't have to quit your job in order to do the work that is necessary to take care of your children and your parent because it's overwhelming to try to do it all. And so my plan is to have and allow Medicare to cover the cost of home health care for our seniors. These are a couple of examples, including what we talked about in terms of price gouging, and what we need to do in addition, and it's a new approach that I think is well overdue, let's invest in the small businesses of America. I, I, uh, the woman who helped raise us was a small business owner. I know who small business owners are. I know what they do. They are the backbone of America's economy. And for too long, we've overlooked their value to the economy as a whole, much less to the economy of neighborhoods and communities. So that's why my plan, and it's a new approach, is about tax cuts for our small businesses so that they can invest in themselves and grow and in the process invest in communities, invest in neighborhoods, and strengthen our economy overall. So those are some examples. It's about a new approach, a new generational leadership based on new ideas and frankly, different experiences. I bring a whole set of different experiences to this job and the way I think about so, it than, so, than Joe Biden. You know, after the town hall, it was interesting. You had Jake Tapper for um, example, uh, you know, talking about the fact that um, you know, Donald Trump didn't accept the invite and Vice President Kamala Harris did play this clip. The, whether or not she's uh, being, being held to a different standard. Yeah. I mean, Donald Trump, we invited Donald Trump to be here. This yeah. is supposed to be a debate night. Uh, she accepted. He did not. So we said, OK, let's have two town halls. She accepted. Mm -hmm. He did not. The reason that we are not critiquing Donald Trump's performance uh, at a town hall this evening yep. is because Donald Trump did not agree yeah. to participate in a town hall. Yep here in Delaware County, and she did. So but over here, you had Jake Tapper then kind of being uh, introspective, if, if you will. And he was like, it seems like we're treating her like a regular politician while Donald Trump's talking about rounding Americans up in concentration camps. You think, Jake Tapper? Here, play this clip. You know, it strikes me what's interesting about the moment we're in right now is that we in the media are treating Vice President Harris like we treat a normal politician and we're critiquing her answers and we're talking about, well, she could have said this differently, she could have said that differently. Meanwhile, the Republican nominee literally is talking about mm -hmm. liberals being the enemy within, talking about using the, pen, using the military to go after these people. His defenders say, oh no, he's talking about uh, going after illegal immigrants or he's going after you know, mobs in the street and Trump will say, no, no, no. I mean, going after the Pelosi's, <laughs> going after Adam Schiff, going after Democrats. Um, and these campaigns are in two u different universes. Yep. Then, of course, CNN had to bring in its panel of undecided voters. Not a single voter was more likely to vote for Donald Trump after this. Play the clip. We're going to run short of time in a second. So I'm gonna, let's pretend this is a secret ballot and there are no cameras here. Um, <laughs> that's a joke. That's a joke. Is, is there anyone, is, are, do any of the five of you leave here tonight more likely to vote for Donald Trump? Yeah. No, none, of, none yeah. of you. Uh, so all of you are still open. Some have said you've committed now. Open. And all of you, are, all five of you are open to voting for the vice president. Yes. And you understand you live in the largest of the battleground states, yeah, 19 electoral right. votes. Yeah. Here's an undecided Pennsylvania voter. Play this clip. Is when, I believe it was you that asked the weakness question. You know, what is, what is your biggest weakness? And she brought up that she has people around her that she can trust, that she can get the answer from. In my line of work in IT, I don't expect everybody to know the answer. I expect them to know how to get the answer. And her specifically, th that resonated with me because I don't need a president that knows everything or thinks they know everything because that's not what America needs. Sure. They need to put the right people in the right place to lead the country efficiently. One person can't lead this country. Sure. They need a team. And that's, right. that's what resonated with me.
Here's another undecided Pennsylvania voter. Play the clip. Yeah. Tell me about it. What did you care? I don't want to violate your privacy or her privacy, no, okay. but the, the, to the point you I, And I really felt that. And I really, um, I came out of this uh, feeling, um, uh, just kind of a feeling of adoration of her personally. I think personally she is a good person and there was a nice connection, especially as a woman. There are a lot of things that I connect with her as a woman. Here's another undecided Pennsylvania voter. Play the clip. Actually, I think if I had to pick right now, I would I would pick her. If you had to pick right now, I would. But yes. it is, is that you changed your mind since I asked the question a minute ago, or that's where you're str you're more strongly leaning there? Is there what's what's missing? If there's a if there's a missing link to get you to absolutely, what is it? <sighs> that's a tough question. Um, I, I guess a lot of the foreign policy is really my biggest concern, but overall, I think I think she is a better candidate. Okay, and you're a registered Republican. I am an independent. You're an independent now. Yes. Who would you vote for in 2020? Um, I voted for Trump. You voted for Trump. Yes. So if you vote for Harris in the math, that's a big deal. There you have it. That was the event, folks. Let me know what you think. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 4 million subscribers. Thanks for watching. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.